Dark Flame Squirrel. Hello YouTube, this is Mike, aka Dark Flame Squirrel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a Shredge 2 workflow in Reaper that I've cobbled together. If you use Reaper in any of the Shredge 2 guitars, this video may be useful. There are download links in the description to some referenced items. Before we get into it, I did want to mention that I make use of the split MIDI mode in the Shredge 2 guitars. Basically what this does is have MIDI channels 1 to 7 correspond to the strings on the guitar. While you can set some fretboard preferences for your chord voicings, this gives you far more on the fly control for your chord voicings and note tone. This mode is ideal if you're a control freak like me. First thing I'd like to talk about is the note name template that I've set up. I use the Shredage 2 guitars exclusively in split MIDI mode due to its extended flexibility. So this really comes in handy. If you notice on the keys, there is some notes that have an abbreviated term. These are visual aids for the individual range of the seven strings. STR stands for string. The number corresponds to the string. U and D correspond to the up or down limit of the string's notes. For example, the lowest note the sixth string can go is E2, so you will see a STR6D. I found this to be a faster way of figuring out chord voicings without having to audition notes. This makes it much more intuitive if you prefer to write in regular mode and then edit the chord voicings later. If you decide to transpose the instrument with contacts pitch knob or a pitcher plugin, keep in mind that the note names will no longer be accurate. If you use the key snap tool and then transpose, remember to change the key. Additionally, this template is set up in correspondence of my custom key switches. If you don't want to have to set up the guitar yourself, you can download the track template preset. There is a link in the description. Or you can ignore the key switches and set up your own if you're used to a different layout. These buttons should be somewhat straightforward. They basically just scale note length by value. Mildly useful for writing when you're deciding whether you want tremolo picking or just one eighth notes strumming. Credit goes to MPL for these scripts. Another self explanatory tool. Credit goes to Julian Sater for the script. These actually aren't downloaded scripts. The numbers are just Doc Reaper actions that I put together. This is where things get a little more interesting. The number buttons are the most useful when you're using split MIDI mode. Numbers 1 to 7 represent the strings on Shredditch 2, given that you're using split MIDI mode. These number buttons allow you to very quickly change the channel of the selected MIDI notes on the fly. Additionally, the up and down arrows increase and decrease the channel of the selected notes. This is an extremely valuable function to have when you're deciding on chord voicings. Notice how an E2 note on the lowest string sounds a lot darker and muddier than an E2 played on the sixth string. With chords, this concept is magnified. The tone of the strings really add up the more notes are in your chord, and this quickly is recognized when you utilize the arrows to select different voicings. This is an action in Stock Reaper, normally in a right-click menu. I put it here for ease of access. What this will do is set the release of the first note to the beginning of the second note. This makes things faster when you're manually editing your chords to strum. Unfortunately, this does not work polyphonically, meaning it will not work for chords or arpeggios that are rung into chords, all in one fell swoop. But it does work throughout a note row to the last note. 
This is another powerful tool to have when using Shredditch 2. A default function of Reaper, this script allows you to select or deselect all the selected notes in the piano roll by custom criteria. If you've set up articulations to be triggered via velocity, you can use this to grab all the notes specified by that articulation. In this example, I'm using it to select mutes. I relocated this button to be here, so it's a bit more organized, since the other button next to it involves selecting. This tool is a little more specific. This basically undoes the sustain in an arpeggio that has been left ringing. It's an easier way of switching between. It's a lot more useful if you record your MIDI through a keyboard. Credit goes to SPK77 for the script. The other buttons I have set up aren't necessarily specific to Shredditch 2, but they're somewhat useful to have in my opinion. Over time, if I collect a couple more useful functions for Shredditch 2, I'll make another video covering it. If you'd like to support this channel, you know what to do. Leave a like and a comment and consider subscribing. I actually have a tutorial series in the works for Shredditch 2 and other sample guitar content, so you may want to subscribe for that. Thanks for watching. U and D correspond to the up or down limit of the string's notes. For example, the lowest note of the the lowest note of the sixth string the lowest note of the sixth the lowest note of the sixth fuck. The lowest note.